What's up, YouTube? It's T-Money. Welcome to week three of the NFL predictions. We have Jake here once again. Elijah is unfortunately not here with us. He is currently uh, calling a volleyball game. So, Elijah, once you see this, I hope the game went well for you. Good luck, man. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead and get into our predictions uh, right away here. Uh, as we pull up the sheet here, like uh, Elijah's picks are to the right as per usual, or to the left. Uh, so it'll just be, it'll be just be looking at mine and Jake's. As week one will start Thursday, as it's as it has been for the past few seasons. This week it'll be the San the San Francisco Giants. How many freaking times am I gonna do that on a video? The New York Football Giants taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Now I'm pulling up the um lines here because i want to get the lines for us so that way it gives us ideas as to what honestly trev i don't think you really need to worry about that for this one if the 49ers don't absolutely blow the brakes off the giants i'll be very surprised especially considering it took a miraculous comeback for the giants last week to beat the cardinals who we all know are actively tanking without tanking you know, that was still a pretty thing. good game, though. Like, let's be honest here. Like, oh, yeah. It, it, it came it down. And, but you got two bad teams that made a really good game out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like I say, though, you know, taking nothing away from the Cardinals. We all know what they're going to be this year. And the fact that it took the Giants six quarters to get one score. And then they finally managed to, you know, get a little momentum going from there. You know, I will say, though, the Giants still have plenty of time, even though Saquon's going to be out as well. But, again, 49ers take this one easily, especially because it's at home. And the 49ers, in my opinion, are turning more and more into my likely pick for NFC champs at this point. Yeah, so you're picking the Niners then? Yep. Okay. Uh, looking at the injury list before I make my prediction, um, the uh, – the Niners are going to have three players. I have three players currently on, uh, currently on the list. One of them won't be playing this week. That's the Samuel Womack the uh, third. He's currently on the IR, and then Ambry Thomas and Brandon Ayuk I both are questionable as of yesterday and today. Hmm. Looking at the Giants injury report. Uh, my God, you might as well throw the whole damn team on there. Uh, Micah McFadden, as he, uh, Ajlori, Ajlara? Oh, Aziz Ojolarie, I think is how you say it. Aziz Ojolarie. Ojolarie, yeah. yeah. Um, Andrew Thomas, Saquon Barkley, and Wandale Robinson all listed on as questionable as of yesterday and today. The only one yesterday being McFadden. It's Brock Purdy. And freaking, um, I can't think of his dang name. Uh, what's the Gafford? tight end's name? Oh, uh, no. Kittle. Kittle. It's freaking Purdy and Kittle. If you, I'm sorry, Giants fans, you're gonna have a crappy year again, but you have a corner to turn, and hopefully that corner is relatively soon for you guys. Whoops, wrong spot. Hopefully that corner is relatively soon for you guys. I'm also going to pick the 49ers here. Looking yeah, at the like next. I, yeah, like I say, just kind of wrapping this up here, you know. I think the 49ers, as I said, they could be, in my opinion, at this point, the 49ers are, might have be my dark horse pick for Super Bowl champions. But the, would they really be a dark horse, though? So be interesting to see just how, you know, much the Niners and the Eagles and Cowboys and teams like that, how the rest of the season plays out because it's only week two, you know, who knows? Yeah. Then you got the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Baltimore Ravens, the Ravens. I'm channeling my inner uh, Tom Grossi here, as you can probably hear the Ravens coming off a very close win over the Cincinnati Bengals into the 27, 24 win on the road against a very struggling Cincinnati Bengals squad and not very characteristic if you ask if you ask everyone who follow, who's followed them the past few years. And then you have yep. the Indianapolis Colts who are coming off a 31-20 win over the Houston Texans. 
uh, Jake, I think I can speak for both of us. Um, screw us in picking the Texans for the remainder of the year. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I it's not that I'm not, you know, wasn't expecting it or anything like that. Just because, again, it's a new regime, new quarterback, new basically everything. However, though, I don't mind what I'm seeing, you know, because they do have the building blocks and stuff like that. So it is what it is there. You know, I mean, it. the beginning part of the NFL is always the most wonky until you get to like around, I'd say, week five, week six, you kind of start getting an idea. But it's always that first month, especially with, you know, preseason being what it is anymore. Just more so a showcase for your second and third string guys, not so much actual, um, you know, starters and stuff like that. So it always takes teams a little bit to get going. But once they get going, then you kind of understand. But anyway, kind of coming back to the Ravens and the Colts here, give me the Ravens because it's at home. And, I mean, Lamar is looking really good this year. Zay Flowers might finally be that number one receiver with Bateman. And even though with – J.K. Dobbins being done for the year, which kind of sucks on one of my fantasy teams, but it is what it is. Gus Edwards stepped in and did pretty well himself, and I mean, they got enough weapons there on offense and defense to get it done this week. Give me the Ravens, especially because I don't know is if Anthony Richardson will be playing this week or not, because remember, last week he went out due to an injury or a concussion, and Gardner Minshew finished that game against the Texans. Actually, very good segue on that, Jake. Um, was looking at the injury report. Uh, Evan Hall's on the IR, so he will not be playing this weekend. Um, Anthony Richardson and Ryan Kelly both labeled as questionable. And then looking at the Ravens, uh, Marlon Humphrey, Tyler Lind- Linderbaum, Ronnie Stanley, Marcus Williams, and are, are all labeled questionable. And then uh, Darius Washington is on the IR. He will not be playing this weekend. Um, all of those players are actually thrown on the list today. So I didn't. I don't see OBJ on this list. So that could either mean that he is actually injured and he's done for a few weeks, or he's off the injured list and he's back to practicing and they just haven't thrown him on the list. Um, with that, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to pick the Ravens here. You don't see if, if for Anthony Richardson doesn't play, like you said, Jake, there's no shot the Colts are going to win this game with Gardner Minshew. I mean, if you look at Gardner Minshew's last start last season, I think that was his only start last season. That was against the Saints, and he lost that game. So yeah. there's not really much to go off of here. You got to pick the Ravens to play to play it on the safe side. Uh, next game, and this one is an intriguing matchup. You got the Very one intriguing. One, you got the one and one Tennessee Titans taking on the one and one Cleveland Browns. The Browns. Well, actually, I'll start with the Titans first. First game of the season, they didn't score a single touchdown. All five field goals, and the and the Saints somehow were able to pull off that win mm-hmm. in the Superdome. Mm-hmm. They go home for their home opener, and they pull off a 27-24 overtime win over the over the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, that, I didn't watch any of that game, I'm going to be honest. I didn't really watch much of uh, any other game, a lot of games other than the Packers and Falcons game because, well, that's the game that my buddy's a big fan of, is the, is the, is the Packers. And then looking at the Browns and... Steelers, they played last night and lost 26 to 22 in Pittsburgh. Now, I want to throw this out there. Nick Chubb done for the season with the horrible, horrible knee injury. It, he bro- he look, look, I'll, I'll just be straight up honest. He freaking broke his knee. He broke his leg. Uh, Elijah yeah. sent us. I actually squirmed when I saw the video. Yeah, I I like what I let's put it this way. For those of you who watched that game, that Monday night game with the Steelers and the Browns, because depending on when Trevor puts this up, 
the last Monday night game against, you know, between the Browns and the Steelers. They didn't even show the replay. That's how bad it was. And the Steelers fans were even growing. You know that it's bad when you have the entire stadium going, ugh, like cringe. Especially when it's an opponent player that gets injured. It's kind of mm-hmm. like, and also, let me also throw this out there. The last three Monday nights that have officially that have officially been titled as Monday Night Football have all had a horrific injury. Yeah. Looking at last season, we had the DeMar Hamlin incident. This year, last week, Aaron Rodgers. It wasn't really that horrific. All you just saw was a ripple in his leg, but it was still kind of uh, it's still a season ender or potential season ender. So, and then you and then last and then just yesterday, as we're recording this, we're recording this on a Tuesday. You have the Nick Chubb incident. Mm-hmm. So, I think that without Nick Chubb, I don't know, think the Browns are going to make a lot of noise. Nick Chubb was one of the one of that offense's high, uh, uh. Uh, high rifle players. That's mm-hmm. not the correct word, but you know, understand what I mean. Was one of basically the key. Guys. What, yeah, that uh, basically the cog that stir or like a cog that moves the motor. Exactly, and without that cog, well, that off. I don't know how much that offense is going to run. So, with that being said, and especially with the injury happening during Monday night, and the and the Browns end up losing that game. I'm going to pick the Tennessee Titans here in a small upset. This won't be my official upset pick, but do oh, yeah. give me the Titans on the road. I like the fact I do like the fact that the that the Titans were able to figure out that figure out that offense as Ryan Tannehill, he his only three interceptions all season were against the Saints. He didn't throw a single pick that pick. He cleaned it up, had a very good game against the Chargers and pulled off the win. I'm saying the Titans are going to pull off this win. Ooh, this one's tough for me just because, uh, yeah, like I say, if Chubb were in, the, in my opinion, give me the Browns just because I have enough on defense. With that said, though, you know, like I say, with Chubb being injured, you know, and the Titans coming into town, you know, the Browns are going to probably put it all on the line on Sunday. So for that, give me the brownies on this one. Just because yeah. I feel like they're going to rally around the Chubb injury. They still do have a decent run game. I mean, the backup running back Ford, I think it was, was his last name. Number 34 for the Browns. I know they're uh, looking at Kareem Hunt. I'll look at it here in just a second. I'm trying to... Uh, yeah, he ripped off like a seven-year, 80-yard run himself. I mean... He has the, they have the ability to get it done and stuff like that. And I just have a feeling with the injury to Nick Chubb and then like, you know, them coming off of a short week and stuff like that at home, I feel like they'll be able to do enough to, you know, honor him, I guess, for lack of a better term, and just, you know, put it all on the line, especially after how they lost that Monday night game with that strip sack TJ Watt return. So, for that, I say the Browns bounce back. There you go. So, our first difference game of the week. Um, that could, there, I mean, there could be others, but like I said, Elijah's not here right now, so we won't know if he decides to pick a, pick a different team. Uh, but for now, let's move down. This next game we have. Uh, he completely botched this, but that's fine. I can, I can adjust to it. It'll be the Atlanta Falcons traveling to Detroit to take on the Lions. The Lions coming off their first loss of the season in a very thrilling overtime uh, Mm -hmm. loss to the Seattle Seahawks at home. Uh, And the Falcons coming off a close battle with the Packers. Now, I'll take I'll I'll have I'll go with this one first. Um, I think the the, the Lions can bounce back. I think the, the only reason the Falcons lost that game on or won that game on Sunday was literally because the Packers did not have a fourth quarter. 
They their offense got shut down big time on in the fourth quarter. And yeah. if if the Falcons can keep that up, this game will be entertaining. It is a three and a half point favorite for the Lions. If that intrigues you, Jake. Um, I'm going to, it was a cardinal sin that I picked the Falcons last week, but I had to do it because I want it because I need the win. Uh, Oh, by the way, me and Jake both went 12 and four last week. We can see our picks right here. Uh, Elijah had a one extra loss and that extra loss was the bears and bucks game. Mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. The Bears and Bucks were his were his ex were his one other loss. But um uh yeah, give me the Lions at home. I like what I like what this team has got. Has got and is building up. So yeah, give me the Detroit Lions at home. And you know what? I say the exact same thing because I mean, this is the first time in a very, very long time that the Lions, you know, could potentially actually makes some serious noise if they can get everything together and all that stuff. And then if they get Jameson Williams back from his uh, suspension and stuff like that, if they can get that extra weapon to just, you know, take them into the finish line here, who knows? I mean, it's not like the NFC North this year is a juggernaut division. I mean, there's still, everyone's still pretty much in it at this point, but give me the lines just because it's at home. Jared Goff is, I mean, he's still pretty good and stuff like that. Plus, this will be one, I think, the Falcons' first road test of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, double With checking. The, well, regardless, uh, though, they'll be going on the road into Detroit. Yes. So, yeah, and like this I said, be their young, that'll be a, like a game. true test for them and all that stuff, so. With that said, though, I take the lines in a slight edge here because, well, yeah, for basically everything I just said. All right, next game, and this is my team right here. You got the 2-0 New Orleans Saints traveling to Lambeau Field to take on the Green Bay mother Packers. The Packers had a questionable fourth quarter against the Atlanta Falcons, as we said earlier, ultimately leading to their first loss of the season. Jordan Love did not have a good cor- did not have a good second half. Yes, the the Packers did make some noise in that in that third quarter. However, he played like absolute garbage in that fourth quarter. The Saints, however questionable first half only field goals by both sides for the fa- for the Panthers and Saints the, the Saints were able to figure it out quicker than the Panthers were and got off and were able to get that first touchdown of the game actually two touchdowns in that second half uh the Panthers were only able to get the one I actually I think they got two because they somehow when I watched the game it was 20 to nine and then it, oh no they only got one because Twenty no eight seven yeah okay never mind uh two point conversion that's why uh yeah the the Saints coming off another close battle with the Carolina with the Carolina Panthers the Sa- NFC South always plays each other tough I don't understand why especially with me being a biased Saints fan here it's kind of hard not to pick against the Saints especially when you're me um. The key for the Saints to win this game is to make sure that Jordan Love does mimic that fourth quarter that he did that he had against the uh, against the Falcons this week against against the Saints. I still don't know if Jordan Love is actually the quarterback that the Packers are going to need because looking at the injury report, uh, they got five uh, five Packers that are probably going to miss this week. Luke Van Ness, uh, Elgett Jenkins, David Bakhtiari, Aaron Jones, and Christian Watson. All questionable for this week. Uh, for the Saints, it's actually a heavy hit. It's Keandre Miller and Jamal Williams, both labeled as questionable as of today. It's kind of hard to do this one. Uh, Jake, who, who do you, what do you think? 
<sighs> well, for all of you who may or may not know, so anytime I, <laughs> so every time the Packers come up, obviously he gives me a visceral reaction, but also, um, yeah, the, the Saints are another, well, let me rephrase that. Sean Payton was a, again, I'm not going to get into that here because I very easily could turn this into it. Anyway, regardless, both of these teams kind of have sour tastes in my mouth for different reasons here. Just because, well, 2009, I don't think I need to go yeah. into that. And also, Packers, you know, Vikings. Vikings. Do I really need to? Yeah, the, obviously, but. You don't even need to get into it. All you need to say is Packers, Vikings, and everyone's like, gotcha. Yeah, pretty much. But with that said, though, give me the Saints because while it is the home opener for the Green Bay Packers, I just don't know if the injuries, like you, because you said Christian Watson, Elkin Jenkins, who is a starting uh, lineman, Luke Van Ness may or may not play and stuff like that. So if all those injuries come to fruition or even half of them, I mean, that Saints pass rush is arguably one of the nastiest defensive line and like front sevens I've seen in a while. And they've been doing it for a long time. So. I, I want to throw I want to throw out here really quick before I say my because I'm obviously you obviously know who I'm picking up. I mean I'm wearing the team's jersey. The, I there was a, uh, during the 49ers game, I think it was last season before Purdy took over. One of the it was either the season before or this or the one before that. I don't remember when that when it happened, but. One of the 49er offensive players said that this was that the Saints is the best defense that he has ever played against in the entire league. So I'm not speaking bias when I say this. The Saints have one of, if not the best defense in the entire league. Does it win them games every time? No, because you have to have the offense to back it up. But yeah, I if the Saints don't. I can see the Packers pulling off this win. However, I don't see, I don't see it happening, especially with Jordan Love have having that crappy, crappy fourth quarter that he had against the Falcons. So yeah, give me my New Orleans Saints on on the road this week. Next up, we have the Houston Texans taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars. Hey guys, um. How does it feel to get their get your ass kicked by the Chiefs? 17 to 9 is what the score was. Um the Jacksonville Jaguars did not have a good game at all. Because the Jaguar the Jaguars know how to play the Chiefs tough. I think the Chiefs just were sour from that from that uh week 1 loss. Yes, we're 2 weeks after that. Let me point that out. We're 2 weeks after that. But if the Chiefs were sour after that week 1 loss that I think th I think they're still trying to make a point here. Uh, b didn't make much of a point with a 17 to nine win over the ja over the Jaguars. And then the Texans, well, they're the mother loving Texans. <laughs> oh, and two to start the year. Uh, Jacksonville is a nine and a half point favorite. Uh, Jake, I'll let you make your prediction here first. Yeah, honestly, I say give me the Jags in this one, especially, you know, with the Texans being, you know, just – there's they still have a lot of growing pains. Let's put it that way here. And also with the Jaguars, you know, kind of competing the way that they have and, you know, just kind of laying really a dud against the uh, Jag – or the – Chiefs last week and stuff like that, but it really wasn't that much of a dud because they had like three opportunities to score touchdowns, but the receivers couldn't do the toe tap correctly and stuff like that. So they could have very easily beaten the Chiefs and stuff like that. But so they're right there, you know, and a lot of people are predicting the Jacks to be a dark horse AFC team. So who knows? I, like I say, I still have high hopes for the Jags. I still feel like the Jags can make some serious noise 
And uh, yeah, so give me the Jags in this one. And I like how that. Give me the Jags as well. All right, next up, you have another 0-2 opponent, and that is the Denver Broncos traveling to the Sunshine State to take on the Miami Dolphins. The Broncos are the uh, Broncos. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> I was literally Broncos. just about to say that. They have had back-to-back. -back. Their combined total for point differential is a minus three. And they lost both of their games. 17-16 mm -hmm. over the Vegas uh to the Vegas Raiders. And now 35-33 on the Hail Mary two-point fail. Like, I mean, you have you had Denver fans literally jumping up and down, giving your team absolute hope. And then you throw the ball out of the back of the end zone on the two-point try to lose it. Actually, no. A missed P.I. call that should have been called. So, Denver fans, I feel you. I feel you. 2019, I feel you. Um, Personally, the, Do the Broncos are going to... Actually, oh, the Dolphins. Let me get to the Dolphins first. Coming off back-to-back -back wins, 36-34 uh, over the Chargers on the road, and then on the road at New England, 24-17. Uh, so this is Miami's home opener here. Um, You got... This is a really close match here. Very close matchup here, mm -hmm. to, be, to be quite frank. The Dolphins are six-and-a-half-point favorites, and the matchup predictor, according to ESPN, is like off by like point three. Oh, that's right because there's there can be ties in the NFL. Raise your hand if you think ties need to be eliminated from the NFL. Thank you very much. You may put your hands down. Um, give me the Dolphins at home because the Dolphins are in a prime position to actually go make some heavy noise mm -hmm. in the um, AFC East. So, yeah, give me the Dolphins at home. Yeah. I mean, basically, Trevor hit the nail on the head with the Broncos. Like, But here's the thing, too, Broncos. You wouldn't have had to get to that Hail Mary DPI miss if you would have actually played more football. Like, hello, guys. Like, you were up 21-3, to 3, I think, at one point. Let me double check that. And it was Go just ahead. like. They were up by multiple scores. I know that. And then the second half came and they just <clears throat> crapped the bed, letting the commanders come back into it and then eventually take the lead only to then have literally the Hail Mary DPI miss and all that stuff. But, uh, I mean, the Broncos have had opportunities to get these games done to close out games and stuff like that, but they just can't do it for some reason. I don't know if it's the curse of Sean Payton. I don't know if it's just the Broncos being the Broncos. I mean, it's one of those things where it's very weird. It's very intriguing. It's very frustrating if you're a Broncos fan. And I know, Plenty of Broncos fans and stuff like that. It's just, it, it, they pretty much are like the Vikings when it comes to this. If they can lose in heartbreaking fashion, they usually do. It can never be just like a blowout or stuff like that. It's usually in like soul crushing fashion. So, again, Broncos fans, I feel you. <laughs> well, and I feel you like for a completely different freaking reason. Yeah. But with that said, though, give me the Dolphins because holy moly is that a potential well-oiled machine down there in Miami. Tyreek Hill, Tua's looking like Tua before his concussion injuries. The defense is stepping up. They're, you know, everything about Miami is just screaming that they could have a potentially great year and just maybe make some serious noise in the NFL. 
Plus, I like their head coach, too. I mean, he's really weird. He's really a goofball, and he can still get the damn thing done at the end of the day. All right. Next up. Oh, Vikings fans, Vikings fans, Vikings fans, or Vikings, Vikings, Vikings. Why do you keep doing this to your team? (laughs) You got the Minnesota Vikings hosting the LA Chargers. And Jake, I want to ask you an honest to God question. Wait on. Without, Without looking it up, what is the line for this game? Uh... I'm getting like a three to a three and a half vibes. There isn't a line. Oh, it's dead even? It's an even draw Woo! between the Chargers and the Vikings. Because, because of course it is. Vegas does not know how to predict the Vikings. Or the Chargers. I mean, let's go ahead and, like I say, I'll go ahead and kick this off here because Vikings. I think that pretty much sums up the first two weeks in a nutshell right there. Like, just frustration, missed opportunities. Like, the defense is finally stepping up, but the offense can't get more than two seconds before Kirk Cousins' ass is in the turf and all that stuff. However, though, thankfully... The Minnesota Vikings did finally do what I was hoping they would do like two months ago and sign Dalton Reisner. So at the very least, now we have added depth, but Ole Udo is out for the year, who is a backup tackle. Christian Derrissaw is still gimpy from previous injuries and stuff like that. The offensive line still scares the bejesus out of me. I mean, Kirk Cousins is on pace to get hit another like 150 times or something like that, which would blow last year's number out of the water. But with that said, though, it's not like the Vikings are that far off either. They have all the weapons they need. Granted, the run game still, I don't know how much of that is Madison, and I don't know how much of that's the line. This, that, and the other thing. And by the way, real quick, if you're a fan of a team and you feel the need to literally go into someone's DMs and call them disgusting things, get out. We don't need that crap in any fandom, of any team, of any sport. I don't care who you are. Also bringing up that that also happened in the Colorado State Colorado game, but that was for a completely different freaking reason. But still, you don't do that type of stuff. No, I don't care who you are. With that if said, though, yeah, go if, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. If you're if you're gonna be uh, th- make this a public service announcement for anyone, I'll probably make this its own short of this video. Actually, you no, know I'm actually gonna. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to bring bring it up just both of us when I say this. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be that fan that is going to give a give that form of message to their family, to that player, you either need to stop watching sports, and I'm trying to find the select words here, so that way that I don't get in trouble when I say this, or you just need to freaking throw Get your, your phone down on the toilet. Yeah. That is uncalled for, unacceptable behavior by any means necessary. Yes, I say bad things about about my team because, well, (laughs) everyone does. Do I call out specific players? Absolutely. I call out players because of their performance. Do I go into their DMs and say, oh, dude, why the, what the heck are you doing? Uh, You need to go at yourself. No, I don't do that. If you do that, you are a pathetic fan, and you need to and you need to freaking get some help. And I'm looking at the and I know that there's one fan out there that's gonna respond, and I will not have it. If you do respond with the message in my in my comment section with that, you are being hidden and you are being banned from my channel. Amen. That goes for my channel too. Like anyone who wants to be rude, brash, and a pos, now nah, we ain't got room for that spark. Because 
No one deserves death threats. No one deserves I got that. Stuff. Problems, but that's not going to be one of them. Amen. Like I say. But now to kind of get off the soapbox there and just kind of bring this back here. The Chargers have also had similar issues to the Vikings. They can't close the game. Basically also kind of like the Broncos. The Chargers have had, you know, their fair share and struggles and back and forth games and stuff like that too, but they just can't get it done either. Mm -hmm. So with all of that said, though, Give me the Vikings because if we don't get it done now, when are we going to get this done? Like, it, uh, at what point is this just going to be a lost season? So we have to get this done, boys. We have to come out and get this W here. At the very least, just to get some momentum going here because the NFC North is still right there. The NFC North is still ours for the taking if we want to actually go out there and do the thing. So, Vikings, please, for the love of God, do the damn thing. Offensive line, get your act together. The offense otherwise has been good. Jefferson has been Jefferson. The defense has been solid. I mean, wake up, fellas. We're right there. Wake up. That is all. <laughs> I'm going to throw this out here. And if there's a middle finger that flies my way, I don't care. I think this needs to be mentioned. The Minnesota Vikings have not had a win since, I think, late last year. Week I 18 don't... against the Bears. Which that was in December, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So you guys have not had a single win in the calendar year of 2023. Nope. That's a problem, Minnesota. I'm going to say this, and I'm only saying this as a bystander, not a fan. And I and I think bystanders they get to, they get the more questionable sayings over actual fandom. Kirk Cousins is only a regular season quarterback. He will not perform for you guys in the playoffs. I've said it. Take it as you wish. I, yeah. For this game, though, uh, you literally could, uh, oh, God. This is the thing about predictions. They suck sometimes, especially yeah. for games like this. Because you look at the line and you're like, oh, okay, I'll maybe side with the line that has this team on it. Or maybe I'll go against that team because I know how their how their history is, <clears throat> both these teams. I can't do that with this game. Is it bad? It's, this game is so hard to pick. I might as well pick a fucking tie. And take the L on this, but I'm good. But I don't know how we're doing that. I really don't, because if we get a tie, we get a tie. If we don't, we don't. This game could end up in a tie. Do you see that, Jake? I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, I, nothing surprises me in the NFL anymore. So this game could straight up end in a tie. I think the only reason I'm going to give this game to the Vikings is because it's at home. Mm. And that is the reason I'm picking Minnesota is because it's at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minnesota. Yeah, you guys have got to get a win. You guys have got to get a win. Your fans are going to start calling for your head coach's head if you guys don't start winning games. Yes, like he I said, is I know Vikings. Coach. Yeah, like I said, I know Vikings fandom on social media. You want to talk about a pendulum, like, bipolar, opposite fandom. Holy. But anyway, that's a different debate for a different day. If you want to see that on my channel or whatever you can. Hi, I'm the Vikings fan and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I've talked about it several times. I'll probably continue talking about it. But, yeah, it is what it is. I, there's you know, nothing I can do about that other than just be me. So. 
Next game is going to be the New England Patriots taking on the New York football Jets. The Jets. Well, let's just say the Cowboys are probably legit, and that scares the ever-living shit out of me. Coming And the rest uh, of the Dan- NFL, if we're being honest here, because now you won't stop hearing about them until literally the cows come home at this point. Because... Anyway, regardless. Key. we're all going to the Super Bowl. We're going to finally end the curse ah! and that type of shit. Yeah, pretty much. So the Jets, 30 to 10. You got your ass kicked on the road. The New England Patriots, 24-17. You got your ass kicked at home. Uh, at home. This game is... Well, hang on. Let's look at the line. It's a two and a half point favorite for the for the Patriots. Let me, looking at the injury report, uh, Marcus Jones uh, is questionable as of two, as of s- Sunday. Odd. Okay. Uh, Trent Brown, Jonathan Jones, sit city. So, I think I pronounced that name. Don't don't correctly. Don't quote me on that. Uh, questionable as of today. Looking at the Jets, uh, Aaron Rodgers, done for the season. Quincy Williams, Mark Michael Carter II, and Tony Adams, questionable as of Sunday. And now Greg Zerling, I believe I pronounce oh, wow. it. Their, their punt, their PK. I don't know what PK stands for. I think it's punt, punter kicker, I believe. Place kicker. Basically, he's when they kicker. kick the ball for field goals and stuff like that. So yeah, um, he is questionable as of today. This game is at MetLife Stadium, and the la- and this an afternoon game. Uh, so with all the hype around Aaron, around Aaron Rodgers, that's now gone. That lasted seventy five seconds of the entire season. Uh, I think it's safe to say that the Jets are a little po'd after their abs after their. Horrible performance in um, uh, Dallas. I'm going to side with the New York Jets here. Hmm. Honestly, I think I will too, just because I really... It, this team still has plenty of weapons, even with Zach Wilson being the quarterback and stuff like that, so... I don't know why. I don't really have a great feeling about this, other than the fact that I do have, you know, a few Jets on my fantasy team, like Brees Hall being most notable there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I really have nothing else to say other than give me the Jets this week. The only reason the Jets are going to win this week is if they give Brees Hall the fucking football. Pardon my language. Yeah. They, he had four carries. Yes, in his in his game against the Cowboys, and he came out and said, "The only reason we lost is because I had four carries." Brees Hall is going to lead your team to possibly a mm-hmm. Super Bowl. Give him, let him cook, as they say. Yeah, utilize your running backs more, Jets. I mean, you've got two like studs. And solid, solid players. Yeah. All right. Next up, you have the Buffalo Bills and the Washington Commanders in Washington's home opener. Uh, Let me actually make sure that's right. No. In Washington's second home game of the season, the Commanders are undefeated. I'm picking the Bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, you're two and zero. Oh. You've beaten the Arizona Cardinals and the Denver Broncos. Uh, give me Josh Allen and the Bills. Yeah, give me Josh Allen and the Bills as well. I mean, nothing against the Commanders starting two and zero, no matter who you play. You know, two and zero is two and zero, and I think that's probably one or two more wins than a lot of people were thinking the Commanders would have at this point. But heck, give credit where credits due. But I just feel like. The Josh Allen revenge tour starts now because, yeah, I mean, who knows? 
it's another one of those put up or shut up years for Josh Allen and the Bills because who knows how much longer the Bills have before they tear it down and start over, basically. I will say this. Buffalo, you will never see this video. But if you do, if you do not lose, win Josh Allen a Super Bowl, he will go to another team and do it and do it himself. Yeah. Just leave it at that. Next up, we will start our afternoon slate of games. We only have four of them this week, which is actually quite surprising. Which, I don't know why my microphone is like so freaking loud. Oh, never mind. It's just my headset's quiet. Um, This one that you can technically classify as an, after, as an early afternoon game. You have the Carolina Panthers and the Seattle Seahawks at Lumen Field in Seattle. Now, looking at uh, the Seahawks, thrilling overtime win. Congratulations. You are not part of the teams that are 0-2. The Panthers, y'all fucking suck. <laughs> Bryce, Bryce Young, he's getting the rookie rust out. He's going to do that all season. I don't see Carolina making that much noise this year in the NFC South. I think they'll probably end up finishing tied with uh, Tampa this year. But looking at the Seahawks, uh, they're coming off their 37-31 overtime win over the over the Lions, and you and I'm and you cannot say that that's not a tough win. The the Lions are legit contenders, as we mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. and the Seahawks. Well. You're in the same division as Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers who have not lost a game since Purdy has joined the NFL. That's a problem for the Seahawks fans. Exactly. Uh, Jake, who do you pick in this week? Honestly, give me the Seahawks in this one. Just because, like you say, I mean, there's still some growing pains with the Panthers and stuff like that. I mean, honestly, though, I still feel like Bryce Young is the future for the Panthers. Mm. It's just, yeah, like you say, it's like the same thing with C.J. Stroud in Houston. It's going to be basically a year where you just get your players, get everything situated and set up and stuff like that, then push in a couple of years here while you get like a lot of young pieces to revamp your core for, you know, a potential run maybe in a few years. So, but with that said, they'll give me the Seahawks just because they still have the veteran leadership. They still do have some really nice contributors and like Jackson Smith and Jigba, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, you know, they also have Walker. I mean, yeah, just give me the Seahawks. Yeah, give me the Seahawks, basically. I will also bring up another quarterback who first joined the league, got the starting role, and struggled out of the gate as well. And that's Trevor Lawrence of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Joined the team right out of the gate, and he struggled heavily. Well, to be fair, though, his head coach was Urban Meyer, and that year was an absolute... Yeah, that's I, I, that was an absolute part yeah. of my language shit show, and that's the only word I can describe because that's literally the only word that you can use for that. Yeah. So he really didn't have a fair chance, in my opinion, his first year. Now you're starting to see what he can do. Yeah, which he's doing pretty good. I'm not throwing that. Up. I'm not. We're not. Den- we're not disclosing that. Or we're not going to yeah. dis- discriminate against that. All right. Next game, I think we can just gun through the next two, and that yeah. is the. And that is the Dallas Cowboys and Arizona Cardinals. Fuck the Cowboys, but I got it. But I'm picking the Cowboys. Yeah, I'm also going Cowboys just because, holy moly, that team is real, unfortunately. (laughs) But, yeah. I cannot believe the Cowboys are back. Oh. Oh, by the way, real quick, too, while you're doing that. The Cowboys ah. have the third most, or the Cowboys defense has the third most fantasy points this season so far. Let's just put it that way, ladies and gentlemen. That's important to know. 
very important. To I know. should know because I have the Cowboys defense in a couple of my fantasy leagues. And let's just say I'm very happy right now. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> next up, we have the Chicago Bears and the Kansas City Chiefs. Do we even need to explain why we're picking the Chiefs? Or do no. or are people just, <laughs> are people just nope. illiterate? Yeah, let's just go ahead and move on there. Yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, the Chiefs. Especially now at full strength, the Chiefs. So, actually, you know what? We need. We, I need to do a lock this week, and I think you'll probably follow suit with me. Chiefs has a lock. You know what? You do the Chiefs as the lock. I'll go Cowboys as my lock. Gotcha. All righty. Now watch the Cardinals blow them out by forty-five points. <laughs> I will. I, I honestly, you can, even if if they do, you cannot be mad. You'll be no, dancing. I mean, no, but yeah, <laughs> you'll you'll dance and then you'll be like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> All right, yeah. now Sunday night football takes us to takes us to Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada, home of the. <laughs> Oh crap! I, I, whoops. Uh, let me let me let me let me try that again. Home of the Su- Stanley Cup. Co- I can't even say it. <laughs> the Las Vegas Raiders and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The the Raiders. Hey guys, y'all won a game. And hey guys, you also got your ass kicked by the by the Buffalo Bills. Congratulations. And Pittsburgh. You played like garbage, but you somehow still won that game. <laughs> I know. That's um, why this game is so difficult for me to pick. Uh, if this helps, the line is in favor of the Raiders. Ooh. So, I like Kenny Pickett as a quarterback. I love the, I love the storyline that, that is being written here. Comes straight Ooh. out of Pittsburgh. Call university and go straight into the team that and goes literally play in the same freaking stadium he already played his college in. In yeah. uh well what I still call Heinz Field, because let's be honest, whatever the stadium name is called, no one calls it that. The land of ketchup, as what uh Chisel Adonis calls. By the way, he's a very funny YouTuber, and you guys should definitely go check him out. Um, uh, looking at the injury report, uh, Deontay Johnson and Anthony McFarlane Jr. are on the IR, so they will not be playing this week. Gunner Oz, Oz, Oshevsky. Not even gonna try Ozweski, Oshevsky, Oshevsky, yeah, what the frick? he is questionable, Meek. Mika Fitzpatrick is questionable, and Eldon Roberts is questionable. And then for the Raiders, Viola Nichols, Chandler Jones, and Jacoby Myers all labeled as questionable. Ooh, this game is so difficult to pick. (sighs) I don't know why I can't explain this. Give me the Steelers as my upset pick. Jake, can I ask you a question? Did you read my freaking mind? Were you thinking the same thing here? I'm thinking the Steelers as as my upset pick of the week. I I think I don't trust the Raiders yet. I don't either. Like, that's just it because it's like the Raiders offense, Jimmy Garoppolo, like what Jimmy Garoppolo is going to show up? The choking Jimmy Garoppolo or the one that can drop 350 yards on your head like none other? You know, like, they have all the weapons in the world. It's just there's something about the Raiders that reminds me like the Broncos. They remind me of certain teams like that that just, they find new ways to lose more than they find ways to win. And the Steelers, granted, while they're still injured and they still don't look the greatest, did get an important win last night. 
let's not get that twisted here. That Monday night win was massive for, at the very least, just their psyche and stuff like that. So maybe the Steelers can get on a little bit of a roll here. And if they do, they're right back into the conversation of the AFC. So, yeah. All righty. Now to the final two games of the weekend. Double header Monday night football. You've got the Philadelphia Eagles heading down to Tampa to take on the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers somehow are 2-0 on the season, and I cannot explain it as to why. Because, well, I well, actually, I can't. Actually, I can't explain one of them. It's the Chicago Bears. And they're trash. The other one, I can't really explain it. Actually, Jake, I think you could just say it with one word. <sighs> That's but pretty much about it. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, I don't know about this team. I really don't. I am not a Baker Mayfield fan. Am I, if, 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 please tell me if there's someone else in the audience that's not a Baker Mayfield fan, please. No. Other people like Baker Mayfield? Ball screen too. Um, I don't like Baker Mayfield. I really don't. But then again, looking at the Eagles, their last two weeks, that second half has really been very questionable. Mm-hmm. Looking at, Especially looking at their their game against the Vikings on the on Thursday night, they were out what 30, 34 what ten at thirty four seven at one point. It was a little bit closer. Think- it was kind of more back and forth, but yeah, I get what you're saying. The Eagles had like a two or three possession lead, and the Vikings managed to almost tie it up like a couple times there and stuff like that, but. Yeah, I mean, twenty-seven is what I was trying to is what I was trying to say. Mm-hmm. And then the Vikings came back, and then we had a game for the rest of the week. So, or the rest of the game, basically. That third quarter by that third that second half by the Eagles is the reason that I am having a t- tough time picking this game because looking at the Buccaneers, oh, two and zero, oh, but against a team that. They should have lost two, and mm-hmm. then against a team that they should have that they should have easily blown out of the water, only beating them by ten points. True. So, but you also have the effort Baker Mayfield, which we both know effort Baker Mayfield. Like, if there's one quarterback that plays best when he's mad, it's Baker Mayfield. So he's always a wild card. Like if he has his head on right. And he, he has weapons, too. I mean, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, they're nothing to sneeze at here. I mean, most teams would kill to have a one-two punch like that. It's just the run game has even showed up a little bit and stuff like that. But for me, I still got to give it to the Eagles until they prove to me otherwise. So that's where I'm going to go with that for there. Because the going Eagles are still the class of the NFC for me. Just like the Niners and unfortunately like the Cowboys at this point. But there's a reason why everybody and their dog is saying the Eagles, Cowboys, and Niners are the three best teams in the NFC. I can, I'll agree with you on that. I'm picking the Eagles as well. And then you have our final Monday night football game of the weekend. You have the L.A. Rams traveling to Cincinnati in a Super Bowl rematch against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are struggling with Joe Burrow as their quarterback, losing, losing both their season opener, and then la- and then losing last week, uh, both two division rivals in the Browns and the Ravens. So their quest for the top seed for the top spot in the in it in the AFC North has gotten very, very tricky. And oh, yeah. For, and then for the Rams, you beat the Seahawks in week one, and then you barely get edged out by the San Francisco 49ers in week two uh, in your own building. But then again, the, Niner, the Niners have owned the Rams in the, in the NFC East for a while. 
or not owned them, but like been able to split the se- split that series evenly for the past couple of years. This game we're running we're running a little over an hour, so I want to try and hurry through this. This game is going to be tough because uh, Matthew Stafford his Matthew Stafford is rematching against Joe Burrow, and the last time these two teams played was the Super Bowl, and Matthew Stafford got the better of Joe Burrow. Now, the, now one key player that's not on that on that Cincinnati defense that probably is going to give Cincinnati the edge here is Eli Apple. He was garbage. He is still mm-hmm. garbage. Uh, but I'm going to say F it, and I'm going to take the L.A. Rams on, on the run. And you know what? I'm going to go Bengals on this one because if the Bengals don't get it done against the Rams on Monday night, is it over? Like... You have a real, you have to have a real conversation. Then, if you're the Bengals, like if they don't get this done and they don't at least get a W on the board, because think about it, you're already two back of the AFC North between the Ravens, who look really solid, and the Browns, who actually look pretty resurgent themselves, all things considered, even with the injury to Chubb. And you're already down two games in the division, at home, nonetheless. Or at least I think one of them. I know one of them was in Cleveland, and then they lost at home to the Ravens. So you're already down yeah. two in the division. The Rams are a surprise team, yes, but the Rams are definitely not the same Rams from the Super Bowl. And like I say, if you don't get this done, the memes, have you seen those memes with like the $275 million robbery and stuff like that? I have looked that up sometime. So I've yeah, heard. like if in order for Joe Burrow to shut the haters up like that, he's got to go out there and get it done, starting now because otherwise they're just going to get left in the dust and with the rest of the AFC, especially with how tough the AFC normally is. So, mm-hmm. Bengals, you have to get it done if you have any hope. Yeah. And especially, especially if it's a Super Bowl rematch, which you guys should have won the first, the first game, but mm. Eli Apple screwed you guys over because he doesn't know how to play defense. And I'm a Saints fan, and that makes me happy because, well, reasons. All right, guys, that is going to do it for the NFL video. This should be, I should have this up probably tomorrow, tomorrow night right. most likely, so that way uh, we get this all going. Uh. College video will probably be up Friday if we don't have um, if we don't have any Thursday games. I do have to sub games out. Uh, I'm gonna look at that tonight uh, because I got to work tomorrow. So, um, all right. Uh, thank you guys for tuning into the video, and I gotta I'll definitely cut out that one little bit for a short for you guys. Uh, if you guys don't see what I'm talking about, it's gonna pro- it'll probably make its own little thing. Or it probably may just get cut all together, but some select choice words that were in that part with were in that part of the video. So um until next until you see us for the college video football video this week, guys, we will catch you guys later. Have a good one.